welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. Now as always if you don't want to watch the entire video you can simply skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. For general news today I'll be scheduling my two videos today for later on this week on Thursday and Friday so be on the lookout for those and make plans now to be there. We usually have a great time and more the merrier will certainly be the case. Now we don't have any updates for Solomon Kane, Ragbusters Project Vril, Enchanters, Super Fantasy Brawl Round 2, or Six Siege the board game, but let's get to everything else. For Joan of Arc this week, we wanted to give you an update on how shipping and fulfillment is going on some different fronts. In the U.S., fulfillment will be starting this week, so be on the lookout for address verification emails here in the U.S. Canadian pledges will be pulled and the hub will begin processing customs paperwork once they know how many pallets they need to send uh, to get the product to the Canadian hub. In the UK and Ireland, those still missing their games should have received an email with an update. If you've received neither an email nor a game, please contact our customer support team at support at mythicgames.net, realizing that they are now operating at a four to six business day window of response, but they will get back to you as soon as possible. Concerning the containers still en route to Meeple Logistics, the last of them are expected to arrive at port between December 16th and 17th. Once they pass customs, we'll have a clearer timeline of when deliveries will resume. Now, concerning the issues that have arisen since backers have started to receive their pledges, we have prepared several documents that will allow you to check if you have the complete content of the Teutonic Knights expansion and a checklist for the cards that are contained within the 1.5 upgrade pack. They include a visual guide to the components, a card checklist, and a guide for the punch boards and tiles included in the Teutonic Knights expansion, and an Excel spreadsheet that contains card lists for each of the card types that require replacement or addition to your 1.0 version. You can find these documents in the file section of the Time of Legends Joan of Arc product page on BoardGameGeek.com and you can find a link to that page in the description below. Additionally, some of you have been questioning the size difference of the oversized tiles. Their larger size than previously indicated was a design change that was necessitated to accommodate some scenarios' physical requirements. Our previous larger size, when playtested, was found to be too small. And we apologize for not making backers aware of that design change at the time it occurred. The Tarasks Revenge scenario is an example of one of the scenarios that necessitated this change. Now, we'll continue to keep you up to date with our resolution of the other various issues that have arisen. We continue to track and log each backer's reported issues, and we'll continue to address those issues as we reach solutions for them. Thanks for your continued patience and support. For Steam Watchers today, just a quick note to mention that U.S. fulfillment is complete and that Canadian orders are now at the hub and will be shipping this week, too. And so, with fulfillment in the U.S. being at an end, we will now be able to begin processing and shipping the eShop pre-orders this week as well. But to reiterate, we are still here to answer any questions or concerns, especially if you're a Kickstarter backer or late pledger that has yet to receive their game, except for those Canadian backers that will soon be receiving their address verification emails and packages. If that is the case, please contact our customer support team at support at mythicgames.net and they will be happy to help you get to the bottom of to where your shipment has found its way. But please realize that the customer support team is currently working at a four to six business day response time window and will get to your issue as soon as they can. For Hell the Last Saga this week, we are in a crucial month of validation, so the playtesting pace has slowed down a bit and we had to take a break after song seven to make balancing changes on the experience and prayer cards earned by the heroes throughout the saga particularly in terms of how much it costs to use them 
many of the longer sections of texts are in the middle of translation and there is more back and forth between the proofreaders and translators. But here is a glimpse of the progress being made presently. Our dialogue with the factory is ongoing, especially about packaging. As mentioned in the last update, the overall weight of the game and the factory's packaging constraints forced us to split the game into three boxes. One box for the cards, tokens, and cardboard components, another box for the songbooks, and finally one box for the miniatures. And it's on this last one that we will focus today. We've opted for a new system that we want to make practical for accessing components during the game. Instead of a standard game box style container, the miniatures will be stored in a box with removable drawers. As you can see with the 3D simulation provided by the factory, the miniatures will be assessed from one side of the box. And each family of miniatures will have its own dedicated plastic bin delineated by the different colors in the picture. Now, even if the size is imposing, the format is compatible with our dear Calyx cabinets. Additionally, the layout of the miniatures in their respective boxes will be printed on the sides of each of the drawers. Of course, the image we're showing you is a work in progress, but it gives you an idea of the direction in which we're headed. The colors and the raw aspect do not present the final appearance of the box, which will obviously be decorated and illustrated, but please let us know what you think of this storage system. We're interested in your opinion. Finally, we'll conclude with a little preview and a gift to celebrate the end of the year. We'd like to share with you a brand new miniature that will appear several times in the game, the Swarm of Crows. This piece was never promised or showed during the Kickstarter campaign and was actually created during development. Those who are interested in Norse mythology know that the crows have a special meaning. This is a full miniature and will be used as a hostel in the game, not just a simple conversion of a 3D token like the quarry tokens were. There will be four copies of this mini in each game. For Darkest Dungeon today, we have concluded the playtest sessions. The feedback we got was very useful. and We're very excited as the reception was very positive for the overall game experience. All the notes and issues that were reported had to do with the overall polishing of the game. They included minor typos, language cohesion, readability, and how easily the game can be understood. We've now reworked some things on the rulebook, as well as the cards, and we're changing some iconography for the moment to make it easier to comprehend. We expect that these changes will be concluded in the next week or two. Of course, we also have the proofreading phase, which is the final step before translation. As soon as we're ready to dispatch the files to our proofreaders, we will keep you updated. Additionally, we have some important information for our Ancestral Bundle Pledgers and Late Pledgers. During the Pledge Manager campaign, we added an item to the Ancestral Bundle Pledge level called the Darkest Heroes Sleeves, Heroic Protection from Darkness product. That addition occurred after some backers had already verified and paid for their Ancestral Bundle Pledge. The addition of this item was automatically added to any pledge that was made after the announcement that this new item had been added. However, if you had paid for and verified your Ancestral Bundle pledge before this addition was made, then your pledge was not automatically updated and does not contain that item. This is a software issue of which we have just become aware. So please log on to your GameFound account, check the Ancestral Bundle pledge contents of your order, and if you don't see the Darkest Heroes sleeves, Heroic Protection from Darkness product in your order, then please contact support at mythicgames.net so we can arrange to update your pledge and ensure you get the complete pledge during delivery. Once again, this situation only affects Ancestral Bundle pledge level backers or late pledgers. Thanks so much for your patience and support. For Monster Apocalypse today, we've rested up and are ready to move on to the next step in this monstrous journey, the Pledge Manager. Preparation and discussion about what's going to make the cut in terms of additional add-ons and just how much bigger to make the Cybercon, these are all happening. First up, a few catch-up and recap items. First, Smashville. 
During the campaign, there was a difference in the presentation of information about some of the Smashville assets, one copy versus two. Well, to clarify and put everyone's mind at rest, there will be two copies of the security bunker asset and two copies of the resource extractor in the Smashville box, not just one, as previously stated. Second, Battle Royale scenarios. Privateer Press have reworked these scenarios to exclude the need for specific units being required to play certain of the scenarios in that expansion. These scenarios are being reviewed internally, and we look forward to a deeper dive later in the campaign. And third, how are the new Privateer Press products going to slot into the board game? Those discussions are ongoing, and given the glee coming from the Privateer camp about the Kickstarter campaign, I'm sure they'll be worked on. But for now, there's nothing concrete to report. Just a massive thanks from Privateer Press to all of our backers for the support and interest. As we move forward and calls get made, we'll make sure you are kept in the loop. So, see you all in Fortnite for the next update, unless, of course, we have some monster news that can't wait any longer. If you have any questions, please feel free to fire them off to support at mythicgames.net. The comment section here will continue to wind down as we gear up for the Pledge Manager. Additionally, messages sent to us through Kickstarter rarely if ever get seen. We do check the comment section regularly, though, but... Sending a private message through Kickstarter is not the best way to contact us. So please help us as we try to aggregate as much feedback into one channel as possible. In the meantime, keep smashing and crashing. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or if you just want to see what wonders he might be able to show. As mentioned earlier, I'll be back to normal this week for my videos, so be on the lookout for those on Thursday and Friday. And that's it for today. Stay safe, play some games while you're at it, and we'll see you on the flip side. Take care.